Folks, I hope you've kept up with our pole barn rehab episodes. If you haven't, you might go check out that whole playlist. In fact, it might be great for you just to start at the beginning. When we first moved here last uh, December or so, we did a tour of the pole barn. Um, some folks at that time said we probably ought to just tear it down and start over. And it remains to be seen, maybe they were right. Uh, but we took the approach to try to say, let's see if we can repair it. Let's see if we can make it what it needs to be for us. Now, most recently, what you've seen is the concrete that we've added over here. This is where the mulch was. Still not sure why the mulch was there. I think maybe this was meant to be a horse stall area. Um, but we've put concrete in now. Latest thing I've done, which I didn't show on video, was I put this concrete hardener on. Next step for me is to put some sort of sealer on it. Probably by the time you see this episode, I will already have that done because we want to start putting some stuff out here and parking on it very soon. We're excited about this extra space. But that's not what we're doing today. Today we're going to focus on this side door. Now I've talked about just trying to just cover it over maybe and not even have a door. Uh, I've also talked about several other potential solutions, maybe a garage uh, door. We had a viewer contact us who specializes in pole barn rehab and specifically horizontal sliding doors. And as we talked, I realized, hey, this might be something our viewers would like to see. He's driving up the driveway right now. Shane, you're an expert on fixing doors. In fact, just pole barn rehab in general, right? Yes, mainly just sliding shed doors is my forte. We're going to put what? a new aluminum I-beam door on here. Oh, OK. Well, what are, what are my options, right? I mean, I had that old door. It wouldn't open. What's the cheapest thing I can do to fix that? Well, the old door, I probably could have just changed the trolleys and maybe um, cut a little bit of it off. It was down in the dirt. It could have been fixed, but on this pole barn, he wanted to pour new concrete, so that wasn't an option to repair that door. And he wants to seal it for winter, so we chose to go with a newer door on here. But, I mean, most of the doors I can repair, probably 70% of my jobs are repair jobs. Instead of putting new panels on, they'll call me and want new doors, but then when I get there to look at it, a lot of times it's the cheaper option that I can do, okay. unless the door's really been up. But well, what kind of cost would we be talking if I had just went with a repair on that door? Um, most repairs are about 1300 on a trolley change and everything. That's our standard trolley change. We get custom trolleys made. We don't really have to take the doors off. We got special way to do it. I don't have to take the door off the building. The next option up would be a new door. So let's um, say we went with a door, manual slide, just like my old door only, a new door that works better. How much is that? Now, we're, this is a relatively small door. This is a small door panel. So you're talking about 3200 for this door panel okay. in an aluminum I-beam setting, which is the more expensive door. I mean, there's cheaper options, especially for a smaller panel. We usually use that aluminum I-beam extrude aluminum door like Morton has on big openings. Okay. You know, because the size of new pole barns, you're looking at a 40 foot opening, so you got two 20 foot by 20 foot panels. Yeah. You know, aluminum I-beam will hold up in the wind, where some of your, like a tab lock style door will not, they'll just bend. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of them out there that they think they'll hold up, but they won't. So you gotta have a pretty good structure on it, on these bigger size sliders anymore. Well, how big a slider can you go? We can go up to a 48 foot opening, so two 24 foot panels. I mean, are they gonna just swing and do bad in the wind? No, no. John Fair from I-Beam Doors, this is the company I use. I'm a dealer for him and I do all of his installs. He's actually had his doors wind tested. Okay. To 160 mile an hour plus. We'll, we'll leave a link to his website. Yes in the description and, and below here so we can actually see some specs on that. Yeah. But then there's another step up from these doors, right? I mean, not from the door itself, but you, you got another trick in mind for me. Yeah, we're gonna put a Propel operating system, a remote on this also. So it'll be a push button remote opening door. So that'll be, that's a plus. That's not necessarily for everybody, but it's overkill on a little 12 foot. Yes. Door. Everybody wants a roll up door, but now the size of sheds, they want 40 foot openings. Well, you can't get a 40 foot roll up door. So this gives you the option of putting sliders on at a cheaper cost, plus get a remote system where they open automatically, just like the okay. roll up door. So, so this is going to be a lot cheaper than a 40 foot, like one of those yeah. airplane hangers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How so. tall can you go? 
Um, most openings are 20, but you can go a little, t probably 24 foot. Wow, yeah. 24 foot tall, yep. 24 foot wide per door, yep. two doors. Yep. So I we think can, we can, can get a lot of Johnny's side by side still going in on that. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to have a bigger shed. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. I know it seems like the guys are just tearing my barn down at this point, but what's going on is we decided to increase the height of this door up to a 12 foot high door. It was probably an eight foot door before. So this header has got to come out. In fact, they're just moving it all the way up. I think, you're, are you, Bob, you guys are going to take this header and put it all the same header up at the top, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. This is an example of the kind of reuse that uh, Shane and his team does. It, 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 it saves a lot of money. What do you got here? Okay, this is the track that comes with this I-beam door. Yeah, this is my old track. And that's the old track. So you can see a difference. This is an aluminum extruded track and it's patented by I-beam doors. This product that I'm putting up here today and this yeah. is their patented track. Okay. And this is their patented trolley. Okay. This is a 3,000 pound trolley and an aluminum extruded track and it's got sealed bearings. And this is your typical pull barn trolley, yeah. 150 pound trolley, and your typical track. So this, this thing's rated for 150 pounds. Yes. And that's 3,000 pounds. This is a 3,000 pound trolley and an aluminum track. So this is a lot heavier built. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I mean, we we just replaced some of these at at my dad's house with again El yeah. Cheapo again. Yeah, El Cheapo again. They, they, that's all. Uh, that's the all bearings the went out of has. them. The bearings went out of them and they got to where they wouldn't yes. drag, uh, pull at all. Yeah, John at I-Beam Doors came up with this track and trolley system and it comes with his door package. Okay. And it's the only place you can get them. I actually use this track. This is great for butler buildings. The old butler buildings, they have a steel heavy door. Most of the old butler buildings you see when you drive down the road, the doors are wide open because they don't. They have a 150 pound trolley on the door but their doors are steel. And they probably weigh 3,000 pounds, one of these doors. So how long do you think the trolleys last? Well, so I can retrofit this track and trolley on that door and the wind blows them open. I actually have a YouTube video on retrofitting and that's an easy, that's an easy fix. It takes me about a couple hours to do that and I don't even have to take the doors down to change okay. the track out on a butler building. Okay. And this, we found this track and trolley works excellent on the old so butler So if, if somebody wants to have you come out and do that, how far will you travel? Oh, I'll travel all the Midwest. I've been to Iowa, South Dakota. I've been to Texas. It doesn't matter. You're located in Illinois. I'm located in Illinois, but I've pretty much been everywhere in the Midwest. Okay. You know, okay. And then the let's say they're too far away. Where can they get this itself? It's I-Beam Doors out of Chenoa, Illinois is where it comes from. Or you can just, I'm a dealer on it, so you can just go through my website and I can get it. Okay. But yeah. All this stuff that I use, I'm a dealer and I do most all the installs for I-Beam. This is the high-end package that I use Okay. when I do put up new shed doors because, okay. you know, it's, it's the best product that I've found. So, you know, that, like I say, this track is un, it's way better than what you're used to having on, on your pull barns. I mean, yeah, so you can do the full 24 foot for each door, yeah, 20 foot yeah. tall, and this, this track fully insulated right. doors. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be able to handle oh, yeah. that, right? it'll, it'll handle the load, yes. And I see this got these wheels on yeah. the end. It's what are those a guide. For? It's just a guide that goes in there. Okay. Yeah. It's got sealed wheel. It's just, it's just the sealed bearings all the wheels are on yeah. these trolleys. Yep, it's heavy duty. Good stuff. Yeah. Oh, Beauty of this operation, we only got one door. We don't have two. Don't have to worry about it, huh? No, not so much. So the, this door, is it's a special door kit you get, or? It, yeah, yeah, it, it's gotta be custom made. It, it's custom order, the width and height. Yep, and okay. then they cut them off and make them. So why, why do you do this instead of just 
I don't know, two before flat ways like the old Morton buildings. Strength. Okay. I mean, I do make a door that I actually get. I get a lot of my parts from over in Newcastle, Indiana at that yeah. Western Supply. Yeah. They do a lot of my um, custom trolleys and stuff. And I actually get a door panel from them that I can use. It's got aluminum uprights and aluminum bottom. And then I use two by fours as a cross. You can get metal box girt two by fours from them, but a solid two by four seems to be stronger. So I just use the two by fours. That's what I use for a smaller door package. Like if I'm going to an older Morton building and they need new doors, I'll use that package because they're only like 13 tall, yeah, 13 wide. It's not a huge panel. When you're getting into, you know, 16, 18 wide, 20 feet tall, you know, yep. aluminum is just a lot stronger. Makes perfect sense. It's just the it's just the sheer size of the panels anymore. You know, yeah. If you're a 15 by 15 or less, I'll go with a cheaper you know, panel, maybe, if that's what you want to go with. But like this door, it this package actually has a latch and a handle, but you're not going to get it because with an operator, you don't need it. it, it you know, you're never going to latch it right. down. It's got a latch and a handle that goes through a stub post if you're going to buy this door so you can close them and latch it down. It's got a handle on the outside that opens the latch, but on your package with an operator, you do, it, it's wasted. You know. Yeah. Looks like you pre-drilled the holes. Yes, we do. Because we'll we'll put one sheet on. We'll put one sheet on and hang the panel, and then we put the rest of the sheets on after it's hanging. So the first sheet is to keep it square. Yes, right. yes. And, and we so pre-drill them that way. When you put them up there, we mark these girts every time the same way, and so we just pre-drill them. It's just a lot quicker and easier when you're up there, and then it keeps them straight. They're all in a row then. <laughs> Another advantage to aluminum is it's a lot lighter, but stronger. <laughs> A big wooden door like this would be a lot heavier if you build them out two by fours. Keep coming. Keep coming. No more. Wait a minute, I'm on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, what the heck? Yeah, you messed with them ladders. <laughs> Slide it in. That's the best I've seen all day, though. Right? Yeah, he's trying to move the ladder on standing on. Something wrong with this picture. <laughs> I, Bosh, I Bob, I, really, I, I, just, I think if you'd have pushed a little harder, you could have got it to move. All right, lift it up, I Bob. I started going to church seven days a week. So I lifted him off the ground. Lift it up, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Folks, that self-leveling bucket makes that operation much, much safer. It's much easier for me because I could just pull back on the boom. I didn't have to worry about tipping the bucket at all. Yeah, that's perfect right there, Bob. That's a little better operation. Now come to me about an inch and that perfect. That's perfect. Hey, it looks like a door now. Yeah. Getting there. Now if it's that far, can I stop it if I hit it again? Yeah, it'll stop. You can stop it anywhere in the cycle. When it's pulling closed, it's got a lot of power. Now when you're going open, when you're going closed, it don't take a whole lot of pressure. Send it back. Oh. Now you can't stop that. It has to go all the way back and recycle. But it, a little kid's not going to get mashed in it or anything. It only takes like 10 pounds, but when it's pulling, it pulls, it basically has all the safety features of a regular yes. garage door. Yeah, it does. 
Yeah, this propel system, is, it's nice, it's quiet. And people ask, you know, can you make it go faster? That thing goes awful slow. It goes at just the same speed as what your garage door goes up. I mean, it doesn't look like it, but it is. You get you get one of these sticker remotes, and you can actually get a, a push pad, keypad remote, like for outside. You, for outside if you want one. If you're out here, you just walk up. But this will be one, and then you have one of these. They call this the ball mount one. You know, you put them there by the door. When you walk in, you hit the button to open it. Yeah. Or you can actually use this in your car or whatever too. It's one. Yeah, it's wireless. So you got that remote thing? Uh, yeah. There you go. You want to open it. So pull that out. Pull it out. And this actually has a battery in it. So if, if this one quits working, it's just a battery. Any of those buttons work. That's awesome. Shane, we have a door. Yeah. New, new I-beam door. There's two products here, There's right? two products, yep. An aluminum I-beam door, and it's I-beam doors out of Chinoa, Illinois. Okay. And I'm a dealer for both of these products. So usually I do most of the installs on the I-beam door products. So you can either call me or call I-beam. They have a website also. And then we have a Propel system. Okay. And, and they're out of Chatham, Illinois, Propel is. And that's the remote operator that makes the door work push button. This is good for my laziness. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, you just wheel up there with your tractor, hit the button, and drive right in. Opens, it goes. Well, what I found so unique, Shane, was just how you were able to adapt. I mean, uh, an existing building, it wasn't square, it, it wasn't level, the concrete wasn't just as you wanted it, the, the old door opening wasn't quite like you'd want it. So many things weren't like you wanted, but you figured out a way to make it work. Yeah, like the slide, the I-beam door comes with standard parts, and that's all I have to work with. But sometimes I have to adapt those parts to the existing pole barn. Not all of them are the same, you know. Yeah. So it, sometimes it is a challenge. It takes a little longer, but, you know. Yeah, I for instance, on, on this job, you actually uh, changed some of these runners down here. Yeah. You actually cut them and re-welded them. Yep, yep. Um, we had to cut and re-weld the stub posts. Shane used my wonderful welder here. <laughs> I really appreciate it, Shane. Yep. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it's and, been a good. Um, this has been a good install. Yep. If you're interested, let us know in the comments below. We'll put Shane's contact information down there as well. And we really thank you for watching, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed the pole barn rehab. We're getting better and better. And we'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. You need one, Bob. What, one of these? Yeah. Yeah, I need two. I need a shed. I need an 18 by 40. There you go. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be busy the rest of the day just opening and closing this. So you know, you guys go ahead and do whatever you got to do. It's quiet, too. It? <laughs> yeah. Really?